the panel that I was just on was called Social TV, aptly named. And we talked a lot about how television is changing and how brands really need to experience it as new media as opposed to traditional media because behaviors have changed around television over the past 73 years. Um, and it's really important for brands to approach it with, with a new planning model. A lot of the big brands are getting a lot of the buzz because they have the, the big budgets to do you know, large integrated programs and so you see things like what you know, Pepsi has done with their um, integration into the X Factor um, and even what Verizon Wireless has done with uh, the Emmys where they um, had a, basically a product placement during the intro video of the Emmys um, that kind of spanned into the Twitter back channel conversation where they had a twit pick and it was just a fun way to play with the two screens together. Um, and then you know, a recent example is Coke and what they did with the Super Bowl, where they had their ads with the polar bears, but on the second screen you had the polar bears that were literally reacting to events that were transpiring on TV during the game, and as, as well as their TV spots, um, reacting in real time, which is just a fun way to uh, play with the different screens and engage audiences throughout the game. For small brands, they can do you know, social TV in air quotes for, for free right now. And they can do it in the sense of the next time that their TV ad is running on, on television, uh, do a search on Twitter for their brand name and start seeing the responses that are taking place and learning from those responses. Um, you know, that's going to work well for brands that have more of a national presence. But people are talking about TV spots. And that's sort of the, the starting point, is gaining those insights as to what people are saying in real time and then developing experiences around that. So, so something you know, sort of related to social TV is more like the connected TV, the TV everywhere. Sure. Um, you know, the, the Google TV on the big Samsung yeah. screen where I'm getting my internet video up there. Um, with the brands you're working with, are, are they starting to pay attention to sort of the cord cutting audience? <laughs> and, and, and you know, hey, we're not going to reach these people on TV, but we will reach them through digital channels. And sort of, how are they attacking? Yeah, them? so cord cutting is a huge debate and a huge topic. And depending upon what study you look at, there's you know different ranges of what percent of Americans are cord cutting and whether or not that that's increasing or not. Um, I think what you know what's important in that is that people are getting their television in new and different ways. There's you know the primary screen, which is the more traditional way of getting television, but you can also get it through connected TV devices. You can get it on your iPad. You can get it on websites. And so for brands that want to reach their full audience, they ha cannot rely on just a single source today. They have to look at reaching them across multiple screens and across multiple devices. With sort of different, if, if you think of different ad formats, and maybe if you can comment on what you think some of them are good for, so you know you have like Hulu, you know pre-roll, mid-roll, you have in-video game advertising, you have sort of different yeah. ways that brands can sort of do video advertising and. Where, you, know, you work with a lot of brands, so. Yeah, look, my favorite, you mentioned Hulu, my favorite Hulu ad is the, the ad selector because it is a choice-based advertising. And when you have a choice, your receptivity to that brand message has increased exponentially. And Hulu has done studies in terms of ad recall and intent to purchase based on these ads. And they're getting so much more as a result of giving users a choice if you're going to have to experience advertising at least have it something that's more relevant to me so the more that and the more that we can make tv advertising relevant and we've been talking about tv addressability for, for years but it's becoming more and more close um, the better off that those messages are going to are going to resonate how about you know playstation xbox game sort of you know you're in yeah. the game there's a billboard you can totally click on it. Video, are you yeah doing more? We're, I, we're definitely looking at the space. What I'm looking forward to is uh, Xbox's new ads, NU ads, which uh, are connect enabled. So they're ads that will respond to motion gestures. They're ads that will respond to voice controls. Uh, when you're seeing the ad, you can say, you know, Xbox tweet, and it will share a link to that ad or more information around it. Um, that's going to be interesting to see how that space plays out. But the fact that you can actually interact with content that you're now watching on TV, to me, is one of the most exciting things that's happening around television right now. So if you have sort of a broad TV campaign at the top of the funnel and you have, you know, the last click gets all the, the right. you know, credit sort of search at the bottom, 
in that in-between area with online and mobile, what are sort of some of the metrics that you're telling brands you're working with that they should really care about? Or key, you know, campaign goals, key performance indicators, what, what should they care about in terms of saying this was a success? Yeah, so outside of the more traditional TV metrics that you know brands and agencies already look at, we want to start to look at things in a multi-screen world as far as how many people are um, talking about their TV ads. So if, if you can make the leap of faith and say that the amount of back channel conversations, so the amount of social impressions that are being created around ads um, could be a measure of resonance of that creative, then we want to look at how much people are talking about them, but more importantly, what they are saying about them. Because it could be positive or negative sentiment. So that's one thing. On the second screen, if you have ads that are complementing you know, what the TV buy is doing um, on your mobile device, you're going to look at things like click-through rates. You're going to look at engagement rates. You're going to look at, you know, again, most importantly, shareability. Are people sharing the content? And there were some stats coming out of the Super Bowl of the you know, percentage of people, I think it was 50% of mobile users, went and rewatched a Super Bowl commercial you know, on their mobile device. Now, add to that the fact that what if they went and shared it now with their friends? You're benefiting from your TV ad buy of actually creating shareable social impressions that people are going to be more receptive to because it's coming with an implicit endorsement. Whether or not social TV apps, companion apps, second screen apps are made more for big events or if they're made um, or they could be also used for general television consumption. And the answer to that is yes, you know, they can be used for general television consumption. They, they already are being used for that. The question becomes on what types of people want to engage on the second screen when watching TV. And I kind of liken it to you know, almost the MBTI, that you know, people that are extroverts are probably going to be more energized by having a multi-screen experience. But there's still a big proportion of people, and you know, I'll admit I'm actually one of these people that looks at TV as a way to unwind and get my alone time and kind of process and veg out a little bit. And so I actually find when I'm engaging with multiple apps at the same time, and I did this during the Super Bowl, I was overwhelmed. Um, there's something very simple that I get joy out of, which is just following the hashtag of the TV show on, on Twitter, you know, on my mobile device. And that's one of my favorite ways to, to engage with television in a, in a social way. How second screen apps are scaling um, and, and what needs to happen for them to scale and, and whether or not how advertisers are feeling about them as they're scaling up. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the, you know, the, the social TV space right now is so complicated, it is so congested, um, and it's confusing. You know, it's very confusing for brands. Um, it's confusing for, for TV networks you know, as well. And, and there are, you know, and you know this, there's you know, startups that are cropping up every week. And you know, I, I joke around to say if I hear of another social TV guide that launches, um, but what's, what's going to happen for me in, in 2012 in, in terms of what I think is that we're going we're gonna to see more, more of these startups come up, but we're going to also start to see consolidation. Like We have to because the audiences are so fragmented fragmented across all of these apps that it's going to be hard for any one of them to get mass scale. So we're only beginning to see leaders start to emerge in the space and we don't know what's going to happen. There's so much data out there now, you know, and brands are wondering how do I get knowledge out of out of that data? You know, and we would call that insights, right? Um, and you know, that's the big question right now: is what is the value of these social impressions? Um, we're creating them. What do they mean? What do they mean to your brand specifically? Um, and it's not a matter of just extracting the raw data and you know the the quantitative metrics and saying here you go, enjoy it. It takes people and analysts to turn that data data into information and insights and you know that's that's the best that we can do at this point point. Um, and as that data pool starts to grow we're gonna get more and more insights out of it because you know as I said earlier in the panel it's more representative at that point of, of the mass audience <laughs>